What's going on everybody? Welcome to Adventure Daily. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about one of my most asked questions, and that is, Tanner, how the hell do you wheelie? I'm sure some of you are new and may not know this, but my channel really started as a wheelie channel. I had just bought the Grom. I was doing some moto vlogs, some progression videos, and I actually made a full dedicated video on how to wheelie. I'm gonna show you guys how to wheelie and how it's done, the steps, so you can do it on pretty much any bike. Now, I was still pretty green at the time. I really didn't have them mastered on the Grom, so it really wasn't the best time to make that video, but I still felt that it was beneficial and it definitely helped some people. But I've progressed tenfold since then, and I'd like to thank that I have a really good understanding of how a wheelie works and the best way to go about learning and mastering them. So let's start out at the beginning. I've been riding since I was three years old, so I have a pretty big advantage when it comes to rider experience and seat time. It also comes down to coordination. Are you an athletic person? Did you grow up riding bicycles? Do you have good balance? So there are a lot of different factors that can determine how quickly you progress in the wheelie. And I did ride a lot of wheelies as a kid, but I never really took the time to understand the mechanics and really master them. And there are certain bikes out there that nine out of 10 people can hop on and wheelie right away. But just because you can wheelie doesn't mean you're in control and there's a lot of skill that you have to learn if you want to master them. So I said I wheelied a lot as a kid, but what I was really doing is what's called a power wheelie. So I guess we'll talk about that first. A power wheelie is when you just roll on the throttle and bring the front end up. The first bike that I started doing that on was a KX65, which is a really bad idea. Yes, I looped several times. And then later on, I think I was in middle school, my buddy got a YZ250F. And at the time I was like 110 pounds wet, so I could literally turn the throttle in any gear and lift the front wheel. <laughs> So that was my first taste of what's called balance point. I was able to do the power wheelie and then once I got comfortable doing that, I kept bringing it up a little bit further and then I was able to kind of rock the throttle back and forth and just ride wheelies for literally miles, man. I had a lot of good times on that YZ250. He actually left it at the house for like a year and I put more hours than he ever did on that bike. So shout out to Robbie if you ever see this, we had a lot of good times. So I could power wheelie, I could get back to balance point. Why do I consider that still not being able to wheelie? Well, there's a couple key mechanics missing there, and the biggest thing is the brake. That is even more important than the clutch, which we'll talk about here in a bit. It doesn't really matter how you bring the bike up, whether it's a power wheelie, whether you clutch up. If you don't know how to use your brake to bring you back down, you're eventually gonna get hurt, you're gonna loop out. And I don't think there's anybody out there that has learned how to wheelie that hasn't looped, so it's inevitable. But at least in the world that I lived in, using the brake was never a thing. Everybody that I knew was just out power wheeling and seeing how far they could do it. So I've told the story a million times, blah, blah, blah. Uh, kind of lost interest in riding in high school. Graduated, started getting back into it. I was watching some motor vloggers at the time. Shout out to Fool again, Lee Stewart, a couple others, but I really wanted to learn how to wheelie properly. And to do that, I knew I had to master the rear brake. So I had a KLX 110 before the Grom. That is when I can say that I actually learned how to wheelie. I was practicing like every day, rocking it back, hitting the brake, bringing it down. And those bikes are really easy to wheelie. I ended up getting a Grom, which was a whole new set of challenges. The Groms aren't really easy to wheelie at first. It's not like a dirt bike on the skinny wheels and tires where you can kind of just control the direction pretty easily. With the fat tires and the taller gearing, the Grom was definitely a learning curve. It took me a while to get a solid wheelie on a Grom. The biggest thing that helped me was dropping the tire pressure. I was running like the factory recommended PSI. I eventually dropped it down to like eight or 10, which helps stabilize it a lot. So if you're learning, I definitely recommend that. But I don't wanna be all over the place here. I kinda of just wanted to give you a backstory on why I'm sitting here giving you this video because I'd like to think that over the years, I've kinda of learned what to do and what not to do. So I wanna save you from making those same mistakes. So later in the video, I'm gonna get more specific on how to wheelie the 250L, the 300L, and just the heavy underpowered dual sports. But let me start off by saying, I definitely don't recommend you to learn on those bikes. It's gonna be a lot harder for you to get the basics. You really should start off on a smaller bike. The air-cooled trail bikes are really good to start out with. The KLX 110, CRF 110, TTR 110, the 125s, even the 230s. Those are bikes that don't have a lot of power and they're cheap, they're pretty durable. So when you crash, keyword when, you're not gonna destroy the bike and hopefully you don't get hurt as bad. So definitely if you have the option, get a smaller bike to start out with. The 110s are good because you don't need as much clutch control. You are able to power wheelie with a 110 pretty easily compared 
compared to some of the bigger trail bikes, like even the 125s, you really can't do that as much. So in my opinion, the 110 is definitely the best bike to learn how to wheelie and master the wheelie. So right off the bat, just start out using the clutch. Forget the power wheelie. The clutch is the key component to all of this. So to learn to clutch up a wheelie, you're just gonna start out in like first or second gear. You wanna get to a speed where you're not just gonna fall over right away either. And you're just gonna start off by holding in the clutch giving it some gas and dumping the clutch. Now this is gonna take some muscle memory, getting the timing down, but just keep making changes and eventually you'll see that front tire start to pop up. If your bike doesn't have a lot of power, you're gonna need to help get that front wheel up by pulling the bars towards you. Don't get too crazy at first. Your main goal is just to get that front wheel off the ground. So I would literally spend a whole day just doing that, getting used to popping the clutch. Don't focus at all on holding it or going for distance. Just start mastering getting the front wheel off of the ground. This might take a while to learn, but just don't get frustrated. If you really want to learn, keep at it. You will get it. If you get that no problem, cool. Keep practicing it. Don't get it too far back yet. Your goal is not to get to balance point yet. You do not have the skills for that. And now is when we talk about the rear brake. So pretty much all dirt bikes and motorcycles come with a rear foot brake. This is gonna be your best friend. So after you've mastered the clutch up, your next step is going to be using the foot brake to bring the wheel back down. So you've been practicing the clutch up for a while. You can hold it for a little bit. Still not getting back to balance point. If you can get it to like a 45 degree, that would be perfect. And then I want you to get into the habit of hovering that right foot over the foot brake. Your first natural reaction when doing a wheelie, getting to balance point, and then falling back is going to be to let go of the bike. I promise you that. You gotta break that habit and get used to hitting the foot brake. And what that's gonna do is bring your front wheel back down. This is the most important part of the wheelie. This is gonna save you a lot of headache, save your back. I looped many times before I mastered the brake, but take your progressions slow, really focus on the brake. I want you to literally practice this 100 times. Just bring the front wheel up, ride it for a little bit, and tap the foot brake to bring it down. That has to be your first reaction. That is the key difference between knowing how to wheelie and not knowing how to wheelie. So the next progression point, we're gonna be focusing on balance point. And I'm also gonna to refer to this as the danger zone because although it'll feel great, as soon as you get past that certain threshold, gravity is gonna take its toll. And if you don't have that foot brake memorized, you are gonna loop. And if you don't know, looping is the term used for when you go all the way back and crash and hurt yourself. Looping is not fun. I'm sure you're gonna do it at some point if you're seriously practicing this. And just wear gear, guys. Helmet for sure, chest protector, protect your back. I've hurt my back several times and it's not fun. But what balance point is, is the point where you bring the bike up and it's just kind of effortlessly floating there. Your weight is balanced over that rear axle and you're just kind of teeter-tottering back and forth. Now you're gonna use the throttle to keep you at balance point and the foot brake to keep you from going back. Once you get good enough, you won't have to worry about the foot brake as much and you'll be more concerned about the throttle control and keeping things smooth, rocking back and forth. That also depends on the bike. Four strokes have a lot of engine braking. I definitely don't recommend learning on a two stroke because without that engine braking, if you don't have the foot brake, you're gonna loop. <laughs> The engine braking alone of the four stroke is enough to bring you down from balance point sometimes. The lower CC trail bikes, not so much. It just doesn't have the same amount of power. But if you're on a DRZ 400, for instance, it's got enough power to bring you back down just using the engine RPMs alone. So you're comfortable clutching up. You're comfortable using the brake. Just start bringing it closer to that balance point, hitting the brake, bringing it down, and eventually you'll start to hold them longer. And you'll feel once you get to balance point, the throttle becomes effortless. And once your balance gets good, you can just kind of float there. And now that you know that the brake is going to save you, you can just start focusing on the balance point and getting to balance point. Because you don't want to be chasing your wheelies. And that's another term. Chasing your wheelies is when you're fighting gravity, you're not at balance point, so it takes a lot of throttle to keep the wheel up and you end up going like 30, 40 miles an hour and you're out of control. When you get up to balance point, you don't need a lot of throttle to keep your wheelie going at that point it becomes more about balance. So obviously you want your bike to be properly serviced. Make sure you have fresh brake pads, make sure your rotors are clean, everything is good with the braking system. Your rear brake is your lifeline, so make sure everything is up to spec. You may also start to experience brake fade. That's normally when you're doing faster wheelies and your brakes are getting really hot, so I kind of doubt that you'll experience it, but it is possible, so that's just one thing to be careful of. Maybe stop for a bit and let your brakes cool down periodically if you're really being hard on them. But those are really the basic mechanics. Obviously, it just all comes down to balance. 
once you're at that point, your bike might wanna go this way, it might go that way. You just wanna use your core to control those movements and using the throttle can help counteract that as well. But that's advanced level stuff that you just have to practice to learn. So I just really wanted to focus on starting out at a wheelie, the beginning process. I can only tell you so much. This ultimately comes down to how much practice you're gonna be putting into this. It's gonna be easy for some, difficult for others. If it's something you wanna do, just put in the work. I promise you, you will get it. I guess something I didn't talk about is the environment. While I recommend starting out in the grass, once you get comfortable clutching up and holding them for a little bit, it's gonna be more difficult off-road just with the different obstacles you're gonna face and the inconsistencies in the ground. So if you feel comfortable enough to take it to the pavement, it's gonna be a lot easier to keep things balanced and that's kind of the next progression step. But there's really not that much more to it than that. If you have any questions, please drop a comment down below. I'll try to get back with you. At the end of the day, somebody can only tell you so much. Just get out there and practice. Do it! So the next part of the video, I'm gonna be focusing more on the bikes that are difficult to wheelie. So the 250L, the 300L, the heavy underpowered dual sports. That is the question that I get asked the most is how do I wheelie these heavy pigs? But I don't wanna bore you here sitting behind the camera. So let's hop on the bike and I'll show you how it's done. All right, so we're here behind the handlebars of my CRF 300L. And what's different about these bikes and why they're way more challenging to wheelie is the fact that they don't have a lot of power. Being street legal, they're geared a lot taller. That allows you to reach those higher speeds, but it doesn't have as much low end grunt. So for example, you're not gonna be able to power wheelie something like this. I can try it, we'll see if I can get it. Okay, I got it up. A little surprised, honestly, but let's try second gear. There's no way I can get a second gear. Yeah, so first gear, I can literally rip my shoulders out of their sockets to get it to come up. But it's very hard to do. So to wheelie a bike like this, it is all in the clutch. You have to master dumping the clutch, getting the timing right. So we'll start out around first gear, 10, 12 miles an hour, and you're gonna pull in the clutch and dump it. And just like that, the front end comes right up. And the 300L and 250L have plenty of power to do that. When you're starting out, it can be difficult to get the timing right. Now, I didn't even have to move my body to get it to come up in first gear. But if you wanna clutch it up in a higher gear, say second or even third with this bike, you're gonna have to use some body English. I've never tried it, but let me try a second gear clutch up without moving at all. Okay, it'll do it, no problem. <laughs> a little surprised by that, but it is a fresh clutch and obviously I have the timing down right. It takes a lot more throttle to get it to come up in second. So let's try third with no body movement. So to get in the power band, I have to be like right at 4,000, 5,000 RPM in third gear. I don't think it's gonna happen. Nope. Nope, it just barely gets off the ground. So first and second year, you can be kind of lazy, but when learning, you really don't want to be revving it up high and just dumping it because if you don't have the muscle memory, you're going to end up on your ass. So I would recommend using a little bit less throttle and a little bit more body because you're more in control when you do that rather than just giving it all throttle and the bike getting ripped out of your hands. So for these bigger bikes, it just takes more effort. More effort, the timing, just understanding the bike, the power range. There's a lot of people out there that wheelie ridiculous things. So I can assure you on most bikes, it is possible. So just like you wanna learn, start in first gear, like three, 4,000 RPM, pulling the clutch, a little bit of gas comes right up. Now I just shifted. That is uh, a further progression step that we're not gonna be talking about in this video. Definitely do not shift. Stay in a single gear while you're learning. And eventually you can start riding them longer. As you can see, I kind of turn my handlebars sometimes to point me in a different direction. We started to chase it a little bit there. So, But when wheeling in first gear, you're gonna run out of power really quick if you're chasing and you're not really gonna have the skill to drop it back like this and stay in that power range so if you can only wheelie for like four or five feet that's awesome and when you feel confident enough shift up into second gear and then you're gonna be able to ride them even longer you'll have more of a rev range first gear is usually super short so you have a lot more to work with in that second gear 
but you can see me rocking it back that way I don't chase it out completely in control I can put it down whenever I want I know a lot of people see others doing wheelies especially on the street at least for those that know what they're doing they are really in control so I'll demonstrate first gear again for you slow it down I mean I can almost come to a stop there but see like I said earlier when you're going that slow it's easy to fall side to side that all comes down to using your core and practicing that balance bring a leg off enduro style getting Graham Jarvis out here in the 300L but that's all there really is to it guys there's no secrets there's no cheat codes it just takes practice these bikes are more than capable to pull the front wheel up let's try a third gear sit down I haven't done that in a while oh yeah and that took quite a bit of effort but it came up I don't think I'd be able to get fourth gear but I'll go ahead and shift into fourth gear we'll go fifth gear sixth gear <laughs> I ran out of power and eventually once you get good enough and once you get comfortable you can start turning it into little games like I'm gonna try to go from first to sixth and back down to first I've never done it on this bike I doubt that I'll get it first try but we will see first gear second gear third gear fourth gear fifth sixth, fifth oh damn I ran out of power and what happened there is I came too far down and it just didn't have the ass to get it back up so let's try this again first second third fourth fifth sixth fifth four three two one and I had to hold the clutch and that was so sloppy man first second third fourth fifth sixth fifth fourth third I ended in first does that count no but that's all I got guys we'll give it another shot someday all right guys one thing I forgot to mention and that is what do you do with the clutch while you're wheeling I wouldn't really worry about that so much at first you're gonna hear the term clutch in coaster and when you pull the clutch in you're gonna lose all that engine braking so it's pretty easy to loop doing that so I don't recommend that most of the time when I wheelie I don't even worry about the clutch so that's a more advanced step so if you want to try that later on feel free but that's gonna wrap things up guys I hope this helps some of you out there if it did make sure to hit that like button subscribe if you're thank you hi guys yes I see you I haven't seen you in a long time you want to ride well whoa dude i'll burn your nose there if you haven't already and you're new consider subscribing down below we drop like three videos a week everything from moto vlogs to lifestyle to a lot of riding content if you made it this far i appreciate you watching and until the next video we'll see you then one more thing i've gotten some questions about these pants and it's from a company called revolution race i'll go ahead and drop them down in the description below they make a bunch of outdoors apparel really quality stuff i love these things i'll have more videos on their apparel soon um see you later I don't know.